Must all be on our best behavior. <laughs> Since we don't want to want to spend too much time, and I assume I'm still convener, why don't we get started? Because oh, we looks like we do have people popping in here. Mm -hmm. right. Marianne McQueen. I think okay. we're all here. Or, okay. Yeah. Right. So so Marianne is the alternate liaison um, on the commission, um, and I think the email might have gone out. Uh, Rebecca to uh, Canada Stanford. Yeah. yeah. She's no longer an alternate. Canada uh, is no longer a village council member. Oh, okay. Um, I'll so, make sure to change that. So Marianne is, is alternate uh, liaison. Okay. So is it okay? If it's all right with everybody, why don't we get started since this is a rather busy night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depending on what you want to, how you want to spend your time. Um, right. Let's see. All right. Let me get my... Uh, Marianne, we were just doing um, uh, introductions. Oh. And I think we all, well, I don't know that we didn't go all go around. I think we were just introducing folks who, who haven't already met uh, Tracy. Tracy yes. is a new uh, head librarian at the uh, library. So this yeah. is uh, Tracy's uh, first meeting. And so Tracy, welcome. I am excited to, to have you part of the team. I think everyone, I can speak uh, for everyone here that we're incredibly impressed with your profile, your background. Mm -hmm. We're excited that, that you are part of the team. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I look forward to our first meeting in person where uh, Tracy can bring uh, baked goods as <laughs> is the traditional role of the head librarian in some university. <laughs> really? <laughs> Watch out, Tracy. <laughs> okay, uh, for our first topic, the restroom renovation schedule. How's it, how are we doing? Okay, the, uh, I, uh, Richard, I think this may, um, and Carl, we, um, we had a conversation about what the design uh, process was going to be, and um, uh, Richard and Carl were working on um, the design aspect, and we are, we, the administration, are waiting for bid documents so that we can go out and uh, line up, uh, get the contractors. Now, you might have noticed <laughs> that when I sent out this, the agenda. Oh, that that's kidding. Even if it leaves me totally exhausted afterwards. Well, that's good. Three dollars. Um, hi, hi, folks. Sorry. That's Carl. Yeah, um, here's where we are. Uh, I was actually talking with Rick a little bit earlier, and I'm hoping Rick will be on the call yet uh, tonight, but he's expecting to have... Oh, Rick, you're here? Yeah. Okay, well, then why don't you give him the report on the documents? Okay. Um, so I'm hearing some background. I... Okay. Um, so the last time we discussed this, uh, our target was end of October. Um, to have documents ready to give to the village for bidding purposes. Um, those uh, drawings are essentially complete. We received uh, our consulting engineers uh, drawings yesterday. So um, <clears throat> we're in the process of reviewing and coordinating that. And then we have to do some specification work. Uh, it would be my intent to send both Carl's team and the village team, uh, the drawings just to review so that if there's anything that needs to be uh, revised or modified, we can get that picked up. But um, <clears throat> generally speaking, the last meeting we had with this commission, actually, uh, there was some discussion about um, <clears throat> exactly what the scope of work was. And I just wanted to report that um, that at that time, um, there's um, in one of the two restrooms, the drinking fountain projects into the corner of the restroom. And we were anticipating having to remove that projection to get adequate clearance, which was going to cause uh, a lot of um, uh, demolition to a couple of the existing walls and the terrazzo floor. And there was a lot of discussion about wanting to try to salvage the, the glazed block on the walls and the terrazzo floor. I'm happy to report that 
um, <clears throat> when my team got involved, um, took uh, precise dimensions, we're going to be able to make that restroom work and leave those uh, chase walls intact, mm. which means we do not have to tear up the terrazzo floor. Yay. And um, <clears throat> so in a nutshell, we're going to um, the back walls. Uh, there's a plumbing chase and that when I say the back wall, that's the wall that the toilet and the sinks mount on. That wall will have significant demolition to be able to replace the fixtures and put them in their appropriate locations for accessibility. Um, so it's our intent and what's currently in the documents, we will salvage any intact glazed block units that we can to make restorative repairs to the other three walls in each restrooms that may have holes in them from uh, grab bars and things that are attached so that um, those walls will be completely, uh, you know, remain the uh, sort of canary yellow glazed block. We will then rebuild the back plumbing walls. And um, we're proposing that we will simply put a contrasting accent tile on that wall and not try to match the, the older glazed block, <laughs> but make a nice, you know, just put new, uh, what, what the library has done in Xenia, Fairborn, and Beaver Creek, we've picked kind of a, an enlarged uh, tile. Um, we haven't picked any colors or anything. We'll obviously have to get the appropriate parties together um, to look at the color selections once a contractor selected, but um, pick something that will be, um, you know, compatible uh, with the other glazed wall tile. And we're specifying that we'll simply polish and uh, restore the terrazzo floor in both restrooms. So um, I think that will um, certainly save the historical nature of the finishes, uh, in addition to hopefully save some money because there's a lot less demo work. Now, if you would noticed on the agenda, Dan had added an item that seems to apply um, with the touchless and ventilation for COVID-19. Has that been taken into account for these, the plans? Yes, they will have touchless. Uh, both the faucet will work uh, touchless and the flush valve in the toilets will be touchless. Um, <clears throat> we had some discussion about that at our last review meeting, the library was uh, actually in the process of purchasing some of that, those controls for their other facilities. So we'll make sure that that's all coordinated uh, to be compatible with all their other facilities. Terrific. Richard, this is a great report because, you know, I was prepared to get beat up for a full uh, <laughs> demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and as an added bonus now, um, with the proper fixture selection, both restrooms can actually be uh, considered accessible, not just one. So, okay. um, um, yeah, um, and I've been hounding our team just to double and triple check to make sure all the dimensions will work without having to do the extra demolition. So I'm real happy. Uh, given where we've been in the discussions with this to where we are now. So we should be ready to, um, as I say, in the next day or two, we'll send a review set of drawings to the village and to the library. And by next week, we should be handing you the final package ready to uh, go solicit bids. Okay, excellent. Yay. Excellent. And we're gonna excellent. rush at our, our end because we need to uh, encumber the funds. Uh, this mm -hmm. Um, well, great. The on the second bathroom, Richard. What uh, what enhancement or what what are you doing to the second bathroom to make it accessible? We're we talking about just a door a door frame change out. Yeah. So what's happening is we can actually put what's called an offset hinge. Mm -hmm. So that hinge will allow the door to open 
and allow the full width of the masonry open, opening to be uh, approached. And it's exactly the width. Normally what happens is when you swing a door open, the thickness of the door impedes into the actual width of the door frame. Mm -hmm. With this offset hinge, we've met with a hardware manufacturer. Uh, we don't have to tear up the width of those door openings to make them accessible. We're just uh, going to change the hardware so that they can provide full clearance through the throat of the door opening. Okay. Um, and then it'll simply be a matter of uh, remounting the, uh, you know, mounting the um, new toilet and sink grab bars and doing the, the work to the chase. Um, you know, so again, when it's done, both bathrooms would have new tile on the back wall, new fixtures, touchless controls, grab bars. Um, Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Really good. That's really good news. That, that is good. It's amazing uh, how I, I know I'm familiar with those hinges and it's amazing what three, three and a half inches can give you. Hmm. Yeah. This is Carl. In this case, it can give us ADA, which is what we're shooting for. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Oh, okay, shall we move on then to fiscal support for projects? Um, is there what kind of budget has been done for 20, 2021 in regards to the library? We I just uh, had a, a meeting with council. We had three uh, council session and we put in money just for basic maintenance that yeah. we, we do for the so the library. So um, we I don't have anything on my radar uh, to put in. I know we had talked about an engineering plan and a uh, long-term maintenance and capital improvement plan for for the library. Um, we haven't put that in the in the council budget. And Kevin, I don't know if you and I want or Marianne if we need to have a conversation. Um, I know that the long-term the uh, the maintenance plan is important. And um, yeah, how do we how do we get it funded? I think we had a figure for how much we needed, Carl. This is Carl jumping in. Um, we, um, uh, the figure I got, and, and I'll call Mr. Posey back to the carpet on this one. The figure we got when we did some of the work like this on Xenia for a plan, uh, we actually did it through K4 Architects, and we're very happy with the outcome. Uh, but also, I, I just want to note, you know, as the from the library's perspective, um, we're not unaware of the likely budget impacts of 2021 on everything. And although, of course, we'd love to have that plan in hand sooner rather than later, we completely, completely understand if this is an expense that needs to be deferred. Over to you, Rick. Um, that, you were really break. I'm not sure what the question is to me. The question is, would you give them some guidance on the likely cost of an engineering and maintenance plan, you know, year one, do this, year two, do that, just like we did on Xenia for the Yellow Springs Community Library. Can you talk them through that process? Yeah, so we, we um, I guess we briefly discussed this. Um, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> I think Johnny had some comments relative to maybe some of the work that had been done, but but it, just at a high level, what we did for Xenia, um, we brought in an engineering team and we sort of did a top to bottom assessment, uh, evaluating uh, age of HVAC equipment um, and projected uh, lifespan remaining. Um, <clears throat> We went through plumbing systems, basic electric service, certainly looked at, um, and then we looked at what I'll call the building envelope, roof, uh, exterior walls, um, <clears throat> windows, uh, that sort of thing. Um, that led to a lot of discussion, um, sort of a master plan, and we picked the priorities um, at least at the Xenia facility that the library then funded. We went out to bid 
and uh, that work was just completed. So as an example, what happened in Xenia was <clears throat> um, the chiller was replaced, uh, chiller controls, um, that was um, causing them uh, a lot of annual maintenance and repairs because of the age of the chiller. So that chiller was replaced. Uh, during the course of the project, the boiler was evaluated and uh, it was originally felt that it had a few more years and uh, <clears throat> uh, their maintenance crew had an evaluation done that there was some significant deterioration to the masonry lining on the inside and it didn't make sense to repair when it was going to be needing replaced in seven or eight years. So there was some savings to the original uh, HVAC work that was bid. And so the boiler was added as a additional work. So bottom line is they got a new heating and cooling plant. Um, <clears throat> the exterior of the stone panels were completely cleaned and resealed. The windows were resealed. Um, you know, things that came out of that report and evaluation that a lot of those windows um, <clears throat> are not insulated and, you know, thermally efficient. Uh, they're part of the original construction in the 70s. However, uh, that was a, an example of something that was deferred and that can was sort of kicked down the road. Um, but it was a full sort of reporting and projection of, of costs. Now, the Xenia Library is, you know, significantly larger, it's a two-story building. Um, I wanna say that that engineering assessment, if I remember right, was about $25,000 to have that done. Uh, it's certainly- Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, so, um, uh, and then that spawned a subsequent project, one of which was, updating the primary public restrooms and making them ADA accessible uh, much as is being done here. So um, <clears throat> that's certainly something that, uh, you know, I'd be happy to get into more detail with, or we could sit down if, if you were interested in seeing a proposal relative to Yellow Springs uh, facility, uh, we, we'd be happy to assist and Giving you the budget numbers for that, Richard. How much savings do you think we uh, we will generate by the changes that you made to the bathroom renovation? So we're not breaking up the floor and having to do um, uh, more demolition than just that one wall. Right. So what are the savings do you you anticipate that you've cut out of that? Um, we, we haven't, that's one of the things, I mean, we have not put our estimating crew onto that yet, but, you know, I mean, it's a very small area. We're still, um, um, you know, I'm going to guess four or $5,000. Okay. So I may still end up spending 60 plus thousand. Yeah, I would, um, I think it's going to be less than that. Um, I think we're in the, I, you know, I think you're probably, I, I can't remember. And to be honest, our budget was put together in 2018. So that needs to be updated. It's part of, it's part of the bid package that we would give you next week would include our updated estimate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking, I don't, I don't, I, I, I wonder what the estimate would be to do the engineering study or the maintenance plan. Um, I know that I, it's, it's going to be a heavy lift to try to come up with uh, $25,000 to do that. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't, that wouldn't be in that. There, there was a, it's a lot bigger facility in Xenia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I would have to get the engineering team in to put a proposal together. Okay. I would be interested in knowing what that proposal is because if okay. I, I, I can't speak for counsel on this matter, but I think if, if the work that you've done can generate that savings and we're able to get both things done without going above what has already been authorized by council, I think yeah. I could probably make uh, a good argument. 
Yeah, I would see. The, would yeah. the estimate be lower because we have uh, most of the windows are fairly new? The HVAC system is fairly new. That 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 is something that that might not take as long to to evaluate. <laughs> Um, this is Carl jumping in. Um, Becky's raising an important point. Um, the Library Commission years ago, when I had uh, black hair instead of gray, um, we got a start. We kind of got a bit of a flying start on this sort of thing. And there has been some substantial work done, including replacement of the HVAC system. We've got a brand new roof. We've got a lot of new windows. Part of what the village can do here, Jose, is something that they didn't do before, which is get a regular maintenance plan, which will keep little deferred maintenance problems from becoming big costs, which was a feature of our previous approach. So, you know, uh, you don't have a lot of big problems to tackle right now. Uh, and and, and the, as a villager and all that sort of thing, the idea behind a plan would be to keep it that way. Yeah. Uh, Josue, I'll, I'll address your a question the question you started to ask about council I, I would just submit that once we get um the whatever the current or most uh, recent plan is from uh rick and his folks uh maybe uh, me you marianne and johnny can sit down to to take a look at things from a, a budgetary perspective um i certainly do anticipate uh, you know there being some savings because there's so much less work being done uh, than, than what we were anticipating. Um, and, and Carl, I would ask the things that were, that have been tackled over the last couple of years, were those uh, as a result of some uh, plan or guidance that somebody did? I, I, I want to think about Ted Donnell, but I don't know if it was him, but did not somebody do maybe a engineering study light, if you will, uh, to right. give us some guidance? Kevin, that's a good question. The only study that was done was Ted's um, work, and then uh, the, the Library Commission essentially has, uh, under uh, uh, Becky's very excellent leadership, <laughs> pestered the daylights out of the village to get this, that, and the other thing done. And, uh, and of course, the big thing was the roof. Uh, at the time the roof was done, Patty turned to me and said, now, I've done your roof. Don't ask me for anything for a couple of years while I recover all this money, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and we said, sure. And, but, but again, if you actually look at the amount of work that's been done on the building since I started with the commission in 2007, it actually is very substantial. Um, part of what the village can do is consolidate the gains that it's made uh, by making sure that it's doing the routine DM and that sort of thing. Because historically, the village's maintenance approach was purely reactionary. And part of what the commission is been spending its time doing over these years is to try to get it proactive rather than reactionary. Well, well, it's interesting that you <clears throat> that you say that, Carl, because that was part of a discussion in a budget meeting we had today. Um, uh, we were wondering or just musing about, you know, the deferred maintenance that had been accumulated over uh, several years up until maybe the last uh, eight, 10 years. So we definitely have a different attitude um, about the facilities that we're responsible for. So you know, I can ex certainly expect uh, a different experience moving forward than what you've had in the past. Well, I certainly hope that what, what, I, what uh, Johnny and I have done in just the last 14 months uh, uh, speaks to that. We've done a lot of work uh, recently. So, and that's next on the agenda. So we're back. Yeah, when you're yeah. Ready. Um, ramps and railings. Uh, that is done. We've got all the railings uh, repaired. And and because I know there was a problem, with, there was an initial repair, but then something went wrong and had to be redone. So the redo has been done. Yes, from what I understand, it was all all Good. fixed. Yes. I can knock an, an item off. Great. Uh, front porch pillar grout repair. The the pillar has been retucked and we grouted. Whoa. That's done. Front brick retaining wall repair. Completely repaired. All right. A paint for handrails, loose handrail. We took care of those as well. Super. Water and ice on the north side. Uh, no, that, uh, that is uh, um, a much bigger lift. There's a problem with 
the downspouts, the sizing of the downspout, the gap uh, between the downspout and the uh, drain catch. Uh, so yeah, that's, um, that's gonna require a little more work. Um, I am uh, conscious of it that winter is upon us and we wanna avoid any water runoff and freezing that may happen. So I'll have the, the crews uh, work, um, uh, figure something out a, a solution until we are able to increase the size of that, uh, that uh, downspout and, um, and how that water captured. Now this doesn't happen all the time. It happens when we get a lot of, uh, we get significant rain in a short amount of time. Right. Well, that looks like we've taken care of it. Are, are there any other issues that we need to talk about tonight? Yes, we've got a couple more repairs that we did. We changed the condensate pump on the AC system. Mm -hmm. We've installed an ionizing uh, filtration system. This is uh, directed for a COVID-19 um, uh, response. So the, and we've installed an ionizing technology that will uh, also reduce energy cost um, because of- Oh, the right. Yeah, so. We, we, um, we're excited to have that. The ionization technology kills viruses, bacteria, mold spores, and bad odors. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's a problem at the library, but it's in, in the marketing material. <laughs> um, we've also uh, made repairs to the hot water heater. The, we power wash the, the building and um, yeah, I think that that's it. All right. We've had a Tracy, yeah, have you noticed any new issues cropping up? I have not. Good. Excellent. Yeah. This way, could you uh, send some information about that uh, ionizing technology that uh, you've added on to the HVAC system? Just kind of curious what it's about and is it <clears throat> sufficient for the building? Um, what do you mean? Is it sufficient for the building, Dan? Well, just I'm just curious. What what did you add it on to the building? What tell me about the ionizing technology? Okay, let me let me pull up my um, let me put a spec sheet on it. Yeah, it's um, it's, well, it's not ur urgent, but I was just kind of curious what it is, and um, because I think you know that's a that's the other item that ventilation for. Uh, COVID-19, I think that's a big issue. It's not gonna go away in 2021. Well, Jose is pulling up that sheet. I, I would add uh, with deep gratitude, that list of stuff that uh, has been accomplished is a lot and yeah. it is, um, uh, it, 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 and, and as the point was made earlier by, by Kevin, it really has been a hallmark more of the last two administrations realizing that some of us on the on the library commission have been through more than five village managers this, <laughs> at this point it's, yes. it's really been more a characteristic of the last couple that stuff gets uh up and out and but boy that sure is a list of up and out and we sure are grateful thank you mm -hmm. so much thank you carl appreciate that my evaluation's coming up in december so <laughs> kevin did you hear that <laughs> du duly noted <laughs> Marianne, you too. Yep. Mary Marianne's on board as well. <laughs> okay. Anything uh, else? All right. So this is this is the the marketing material that we have on the on the device. Now we went through our vendors. We have several several vendors that service our buildings and that we buy our supplies and materials from. So in troubleshooting, well, not troubleshooting, but exploring all of our options, we looked at ionization and a, a HEPA filter and a few other, other add-on um, technology that we could add to our HVAC systems without having to replace the HVAC system. So the one that we liked the most and that will work for us was this ionizing uh, plasma uh, filtration system. So there, a device that you put that is installed in the air handler uh, system and uh, this is what they're using it there for they're using it in hospitals and um, airports and whatnot the attraction for us is that this is what hospitals were using and so uh, we took that as a vote of confidence by the, the healthcare industry if they were using it um, then we looked at the features it reduces particles uh, kills pathogens it provides energy savings 
um, and neutralizes odors. These are the features of the GS, GPS system that, that we purchased versus the other filters that, uh, or other technologies that were available. Um, we were particularly looking at three types of technology, this uh, plasma ionization filters, HEPA filters, and ultraviolet um, uh, air filtering technology. The, from this chart, that the, it, should, it indicated that the ionization was the best. Um, we also were, were highly intrigued and motivated by this um, energy uh, reduction. So mm -hmm. um, that's that. How does the ionizing work? Um, I'm happy to send this uh, over to you to, um, to read, read up on it. Um, here are the third-party testing. The, apparently, this was done by the ATS labs and how the system performs on these different pathogens. Um, the time it spends in the chamber, the kill rate, and what uh, agency tested uh, uh, for these pathogens. And so there you go. The other things we looked at is what amount of time it takes to circulate um, the full volume of air in a building. Um, and that is dependent on the HVAC system. Um, and it's unique to the measures unique to our buildings, unique to the train station, and it's unique to the, uh, to the library. So I would have to get the details on how long it takes for the HVAC system to fully circulate uh, the full volume of, um, of air through the system. Um, what that measures is how how long it takes to turn over that air, to cycle the entire air through the system. And, you know, obviously there's things that vary in there because there is no, you can't take out all the air, clean it and put it back in, right? So as, as uh, air is being filtered through, the pathogens are being diluted or removed. And so um, you can't fully uh, filter the entire air in one, in one go. It's, uh, Richard, you, you probably know a lot more about this than I do. So feel free to save me on this one. Well, I would simply say, yeah, your summary was exactly right. I've been working with many clients that have been evaluating um, over the last several months, this type of technology. And uh, in so many modern buildings, uh, including the library where the windows are not operable, you're not getting fresh air uh, uh, at the occupants into the facility. You're totally dependent on your mechanical ventilation. So uh, what you've described, it, it's air changes per hour and based on the volume of air and the capacity of the HVAC system to move air, that's what um, determines essentially the volume of air and how often you're replacing it with new air. And with any HVAC system, when you, you're returning the air that's been heated or cooled back to the unit, uh, <clears throat> some of that air is exhausted and replaced by fresh air, <clears throat> but much of it is recycled. So what, what you're talking about, and I'm not familiar specifically with GPS, but they're essentially that air as it goes and processes back through the return air side, the ionization is to remove these uh, unwanted particulates, viruses, germs, mold, pollen um, from the airstream and exhaust that so it's not recirculated back into the facility. Um, so the more air changes per hour, the better. And uh, uh, obviously there's uh, the units, um, and I don't know the specifics of the units on the facility here, but you know they're mixing in a controllable amount of fresh air from the outside. With that, your energy efficiency is, uh, it seems to me like there's probably some sort of a heat exchanger or something as part of the ionization filter so that the return air that's already been heated or cooled, you wanna extract, particularly in the heating season, you wanna to try to recoup the heat that you've already spent energy heating keep the heat and get rid of the bad particles. Uh, so um, like through the winter months when it's cold outside, you're typically bringing in less new fresh air because 
that just puts a drain on the energy side if you've got to heat 10 degree air to 68 degrees uh, and the reverse in the cooling season. So um, I'm not familiar with this exact manufacturer or this system, but in general, uh, that's, that's about all I would add to what you just presented. Thank you, Richard. Um, Carl here. I'll uh, Carl here, I'll note, uh, I, I don't understand the inner workings of these systems, but I, I do know that our landlords in a number of the library buildings, including Beaver Creek, Bellbrook, Yellow Springs now, are using these specific units. And, you know, they're not going to be a cure-all, but, but it should be actually a pretty, a pretty solid improvement. And um, we're able to use CARES Act funding for this. And um, so... It's a, it's, a, it's a great time to make, if not a perfect move, a pretty good move with, let's be honest, somebody else's money. And so <laughs> we're happy uh, about the opportunity to do that. And uh, we, uh, we, we partnered, we the library partnered with, uh, with the village on getting this one done. And we're just very happy uh, to have it done because, you know, any substantial incremental improvement is still an improvement. <laughs> Dan, I hope what that happens to what's removed from the air? It's exhausted out. Oh, Sway, thank you very much for that. And Richard for uh, bringing that up. I appreciate you both. Uh, yeah, if you want to send that brochure to the group, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, and, and those ways, are those... Uh, you mentioned the air handler, so there's there, you have to put one per air handler. Do we just have one or, well, I'm making an assumption. Is it true that you do have to have one unit per air handler? Uh, yes, and the um, I'm looking at the bid pricing for this. Um, Yes, it's, it's actually, sorry, it's on all five furnaces. So, okay. Yeah, this was the, this was the document for the library. So we installed um, the, the bipolar ionization system on all five furnaces. So it would have been five. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. And, and to jump in, Jose, I, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, I mean, this is the one that you all did all the legwork on, but we funded, right, through our CARES Act Correct, fund. correct. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. I appreciate yeah. the support. No, uh, no, I just mentioned that because I want, uh, again, for, for folks who are newer to our approach, um, it's not uncommon for the village and GCPL to find ways to do cost and labor sharing to make sure that um, we're getting the best for everybody. Right, right. And it was advantageous for the partnership uh, because we we're getting all three buildings done at once. So we could schedule them and and have uh, additional savings because we're making such a large contract. Which uh, buildings did you do at the other uh, ionization? We had the John Bryan Center, the train station, uh, and the library. We tried we, the looking at the... Um, at the bot at the pottery shop, but the pottery shop is on, they're like on uh, some uh, ancient oil heating system. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and again, it's important when thinking about this in context to remember that census is being done with CARES fund. We got the money in September, and we had to spend it by uh, December, so um, we had to move quick on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it was money well spent. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. The only concern I have with some of these technologies, is, to Carl's point, is it's not the in all or the these the hundred percent solution. Um, so we still have to do all the other preventative measures, wearing mask and whatnot. This just it's one more tool. Um, there are I I have seen reports that it can create a false sense of security for, for customers and for business owners. And I know this is not gonna be the case in our library, um, but it has been an issue. Um, and that's a, 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 an issue I, or a concern I have here in the building too. 
that yes, we have this great air filtering system, but it's not um, it's not going to prevent us from getting the the disease. It's just one more preventative tool. Right. Right. Any other issues before we finish? Do I have a motion to adjourn then? Do we set the date for next meeting? Yeah, yeah the agenda has got February 2nd, 7 p.m. Okay, yeah. excellent. I, I was going on the model that we had set up about the first Tuesday in February, May, August, and November. Okay. And so un unless there's a reason to cancel it later, that seemed to be reasonable. Seems reasonable to me. Indeed, I, I agree. Okay. Okay. Now there may be there may be another meeting, I suppose, between now and then because the the, the bathroom work. So sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, last time we met, we we had sort of created sort of a subcommittee, and I don't you know, then COVID hit. So I, I know there's probably been some meetings that may or may not have been announced through regular channels. So, but suffice it to say that as situation warrants, yeah, we'd have you know some other auxiliary meeting as as needed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Thank you so much, people. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Have Thank a good everybody. Stay Carl, safe. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming, Marianne. Yeah.